what's the weirdest meltdown you've seen at work? I used to work in a kitchen in an old folks home. I had a manager named Edward who was a know-it-all piece of uninformed shit. I had a coworker named E who had a very serious medical condition and required a certain medication at certain points of the day. Edward didn't like E or the fact that she needed to keep her medication on her person. One day, E forgot her medication and begged to run home and retrieve it. Edward smugly denied her and told her to finish work. So she tried and ended up briefly collapsing. She was okay, but very weak and disoriented. Edward grabbed her by her arm, escorted her to her car, handed her the keys, and told her to leave. Then he left, to go tell anyone that would listen that E was on drugs and he smelled booze on her. E was in the parking lot and called her mom to take her to the hospital. E was only 20 and very scared. E was discharged that night after some fluids and came back the next day upon hearing what Edward had told everyone about her. She stormed into HR, screaming for them to bring Edward's ass into the office immediately. As soon as he was called in, she whipped her name tag at him. I obviously lingered close by like a nosy bitch. She was screaming at the top of her lungs that Edward denied her to go home to get her medication. That was on file and HR was very aware of. And how fucking dare he accuse her of being a drug addict? And if he really believed she was under the influence of something, how stupid was he to put her in a car on the company's property, leaving them liable for her damages? At this point, much noise can be heard, as all three of them are screaming full force at one another. She threatened legal action and stormed out. Well, she did take legal action for a ton of shit, including putting a clearly ill person behind the wheel. Not too long after this, I also quit, and a few months later, Edward was no longer employed by the kitchen, but rather was working as a deli boy in the local grocery store. I don't know what happened with E's lawsuit, but I hope that place and Edward got everything they deserved. Also, honorable mention to R, the maintenance man that threatened to shoot my old boss in the face for being such a dickless weasel. One of my old co-workers told me about the biggest meltdown he ever saw. The job was a pretty high stress to begin with, and people were always on the verge of screaming at each other. So this guy, let's call him Jake, had been working 12 to 14 hour days, was on call 24 hours, had two hours of commuting a day, said he never saw his girlfriend who he lived with, missed his niece's first birthday because of work, dude was on the edge. Enter Sally. Sally was in charge of invoicing and had spent the whole previous week on vacation spending time with her daughter that was visiting. She came in on a Monday to finish up some billing but was taking the rest of the week off for more vacation. She approached Jake while he was in the middle of working out some major issues saying he needed to get some things for her to finish billing. Jake told her he would get to it as soon as he could. Sally continued to ask again every 10 minutes, getting more irritated with each request. Finally, she enters Jake's office, a big open area shared with coworker mentioned above, and nastily says, It'd be real nice if you'd do your job so I can go home and see my family. Jake proceeded to kick the door open behind him, breaking the frame and the automatic closer. At the end of the hall, he kicked another door open, putting a hole in the wall behind it. He then went to the equipment storage area and began throwing pieces of metal rigging, making a ton of noise. This drew the attention of others who came to check out what was going on. When someone asked what was going on, Jake said, If that bitch says one more word to me, I'll be leaving in the back of a cop car. Sally was gone by the time Jake calmed down enough to go back inside. Jake wasn't fired or even written up. Management knew he was under stress and Sally was told to keep her distance. Also, Jake is me. My blood pressure was so high, my vision was blurry. Not saw, but had. 
I was about seven months pregnant and had just recently been moved to a different office. The new office had all kinds of rules no one had informed me or my fellow co-workers of, and I kept getting hauled into the office to be told off for things I didn't even know I was doing wrong. Now, if it was just friendly reminders, I wouldn't have had a problem, but my supervisor was this high and mighty bitch that kept belittling me and trying to make me feel bad, and kept commenting on how I wasn't fit for this job, Keeping in mind I had been doing it for over two years at this point with no problems. Time before the blowout, she said I'd be written up next time she has to talk to me. So I'm working away, trying my damnedest not to fuck up because I really don't want to be written up and I honestly couldn't handle any more stress. Well, I get called into the office with her and our union rep and I see a notice on her desk. I lost it. I started yelling and crying and listing off all the horrible things she's been putting me through and how it was unfair for her to treat me like this and how half the shit I wasn't even told about. I think I actually started having a panic attack during the whole ordeal and told the union rep of some of the comments she made to me over the past few months. It felt good to get it out and finally put her in her place. She was so taken aback that I stood up for myself. Read freaked the fuck out that I ended up being sent home early because they were worried about my baby's well-being. The notice turned out to just be a list of expectations, only six months late, which I had to read and sign, but she left me alone after that. We had this, like, 400-year-old substitute teacher in high school named Mr. Price. He was one of those, I am not a sub, I am a real teacher, and you are going to learn. Types. One day he comes in and our teacher was going to let us watch the Patriots. It was a volleyball coach teaching history in the regular class, so it makes sense. Our class was super rowdy and Mr. Price always tried to crack down and get all tough. So as punishment for being noisy, he took the Patriot out of the DVD player and made us all like read from the book or some other shit busy work. He locked the DVD in the teacher's desk and then some kid called him a fuckface for it and Mr. Price dragged the kid to the office. In a Shyamalan-level plot twist, some kid actually had another copy of The Patriot in his backpack. I think the teacher had told two kids to bring a copy, and puts it in the DVD player, fast-forwards it to where we were, and gets back in his chair. When Mr. Price came back, he literally blew a fucking gasket. He staged a 25-minute inquisition on who had broken into the desk and taken the DVD out, but since that isn't what happened, nobody copped to it. He proceeded to call us all little shits, and I think he even threw the N-word in there. He started literally writing up every single student in the class. I finally made a deal with him and bargained that if the DVD was in the desk still, he would have to drop the whole thing and tear up the write-ups. The look on his face when he opened the desk was fucking priceless. The bell rings. We all run off. Fiend. My ex-co-worker. We work in an office, and this one day, she must have just been in a bad mood. We were due to have a staff meeting, and she was supposed to arrange it all, hand out agendas, prepare the conference room, lock up, etc. It was about 10.05, and the meeting was at 10. My boss, who was also in a bad mood, came down to reception and asked what the hell was going on. She just flipped out on him. She threw a bunch of paperwork at him and just started shouting about how she's fed up with him and is quitting. She then storms out of the office. My boss just stood there, then turned around and went back to his office. The rest of the staff made our way to the conference room for this meeting, and as we were sat there, it was really intense and awkward and deathly silent. We were all just looking at our boss, waiting for him to react. Surprisingly, he stayed super calm. Next thing we know, we hear someone unlock the front door and come in. We assumed it was this lady. We then start to hear furious typing. I mean, she must have been slamming her fingers on the keyboard because we could all hear it from upstairs. So we all just sat there listening to this noise, still deathly silent. Eventually it stopped and this lady storms up the stairs and throws her quitting notice at my boss and leaves again. My boss just looks at it calmly, then finally addresses the rest of us and just said that he will not tolerate being spoken to the way she spoke to him, and that was pretty much it. We carried on the day as normal. Still makes me laugh to think about it. That was a good day.
I studied on a master's degree in finance, which was known for being extremely high pressure and stressful, and both had my own non-entertaining breakdown, as well as saw others. I'd seen things like a girl break down in tears during a lecture because of the sheer number of assignments we already had when another got assigned a guy break his pen and just leave the lecture, and several screaming fights among students, apparently over group projects. The best was actually pretty calm, though. We had some guy get invited in to talk about some financial security. I forget the name and have totally left finance with no intentions to return, which effectively allowed you to profit if another person defaulted on their mortgage. About 10 minutes into the talk, this one student who everyone responded Respected, basically stood up and spent about five minutes completely talking this guy and his career into the ground. The guy kept looking around desperately and looked sheepish as shit, and after that, continued with his talk with the most awkward atmosphere with obvious disrespect just emanating from the students. He completely lost any authority in that room. Every question he got after was basically a snide, and people were openly laughing and booing at him. I think it was in part the unethical nature of the security, pissing off a bunch of students who grew up with a recession, as well as him becoming the focus of everyone's collective stress. I worked in fast food for years, and while it might not be the most intense thing, this kid who worked 60 plus hours a week at 17 came into work one day with a completely shaved head, because it was much more efficient to maintain it and it helped him work more often. I have never seen someone so young be so dead inside, and with that shiny of a head. The guy is a lot happier now, he is doing well for himself and is climbing the upper ranks in the fast food business. Dude is loaded, has a girlfriend, his own place, and a full head of hair. For those asking how he was loaded, the guy worked ridiculous hours while not paying rent or bills. Being 17 has some perks, for two years before he moved into his own place. He also didn't have much of a social life back then because of the crazy work grind, so the money just came rolling in. The guy is well on his way to becoming a franchise owner, and it's well deserved. Obviously, I don't know how much he had saved, but he got himself a high-end pre-built PC instead of building one because he couldn't be bothered to build it himself. Cost him almost a grand more, but he just shrugged his shoulders like, eh, it's just a grand, which I doubt most 17-year-olds working minimum wage jobs can say. I worked at Taco Bell while in high school. One of my coworkers was this guy who was really friendly, but also really strange. He was obsessed with being a straight edge kid, and drew the X's on his hands, and the whole nine yards. He had a high-pitched but pleasant voice, and spoke in an overly polite manner. Anyway, he had just put in his two weeks, and on his last day, he was working the front counter register. This lady walks up to order, and he just stares at her. After a few seconds, she says, Um... Can you take my order? In his very calm and polite voice, he says, Oh, I'm sorry, ma'am, but I cannot. There was another awkward pause, and she says, Um, well, why not? He responds with, Because I am a dinosaur! He immediately started growling and roaring at her, and he walked back and forth behind the counter like a T-Rex. He did this until the GM who was back making food realized what was going on. On her way up to the counter, he calmly clocked out and left. The GM had to apologize over and over again to the poor woman trying to order. That kid was a Taco Bell legend for several years. I forgot to add that he was a 6 foot 3, 250 pound ish burly guy who wore eyeliner and had blue hair. I wasn't there to see it, but my co-workers have talked about the cabinet incident. Last year was my first year of teaching, and I was working in a low-income inner-city school. People kept saying to me, there's no way you could possibly be worse than the last girl we had. When I asked what they meant, I was told that a few years prior, the principal had hired a first-year teacher. Apparently, one day she got so overwhelmed and upset by the behavior of her class that she she chucked a ream of paper out the window and then ran into the back room, shut herself in a big cabinet, 
and cried. Her class was unsupervised for a while, apparently none of the kids had told anyone what had happened, and when the principal found her, she was curled up on the floor of the cabinet, rocking back and forth and sobbing. Clearly, she was fired soon after that. I didn't stay at that school longer than a year because the principal was the equivalent of Satan, but when I left, she said to me, Despite all the shit you were put through this year from your kids, you're the first teacher I can remember who I never saw cry at school. I'll take that as a compliment, I suppose. Best I've seen was my 7th grade math teacher. There was a girl who always talked in class. She got moved to the front at some point, and she was laughing and giggling, as always. After being told to be quiet about eight times, the teacher is standing front and center in front of her, back to her, and writing an example on the board. Girl has one of those plastic pencil boxes all the girls used to decorate, sitting on the front corner of her desk. The teacher just cracked. In one smooth motion, he spins around, yells, SHUT UP! And smacks the box as hard as he can and it goes flying 15 feet across the room. Smashes into the wall. Pencils freaking everywhere. He swiftly walks to the door, slams it shut, and we could hear pounding on the wall. One brave kid peeks out the window. Dude was banging his head against the wall. About two minutes later, he walks back in. Crickets. Not a noise in the classroom. He begins walking around, picking up every single pen and pencil, puts them all in the box, places it gently on her desk, and then just continues the example like nothing ever happened. It was exquisite. First, this involves the new five-pound notes. For those who don't know, they're polymer notes, and if you fold them up, they tend to stay folded. It's important for the story. I served a customer, a friendly old man with white hair, who paid with a folded five-pound note. I put it in the till. A few minutes later, my boss was in the till and saw the folded note. He decided that the folds meant it had been rolled up into a tube to snort coke with. He was absolutely adamant. I said, no, I just took that note from an old man. He started yelling, rolling the note up in his fingers to make a tube, shouting at me, look, it rolls up like this. Don't tell me I don't know what I'm talking about. Don't tell me I'm wrong. He kept shouting at me, basically waiting for me to apologize and back down, say I was wrong. But I wasn't, so I didn't. He wound up storming off, throwing things and slamming things. He's fucking insane, and I should have complained, but there would be no point. Everyone knows what he's like, and no one cares. I'm in radio, and one of the group of stations I worked at had an oldies station, a rock station, and a pop station in the same building. We had an announcer who was really eager and wanted to learn and work and was really a great guy, but the big bosses were total jerks to him and were stuck in their old ways of doing things. They treated the announcer, we'll call him Howard, really poorly, and Howard used to come in and vent about it. He ended up getting hired at another station, but before he left, he went into the music libraries and replaced all the Led Zeppelin songs on the rock station with a gospel song from the oldies station called Trumpets of Jesus. For an entire weekend, anytime Led Zeppelin was supposed to play, Trumpets of Jesus played instead. Howard has since gone on to become program director and has won all kinds of leadership awards. Total legend. For those asking where it was, it was at a station in Canada. Working a retail summer job. A forklift driver was moving a skid of pickled eggs that wasn't wrapped properly. It fell, and a shit ton of juice and eggs went everywhere. Manager comes out and does the takes off hat and throws it on the ground while yelling, Go damn it! After he went full gunnery Sergeant Hartman on the dude's ass for fucking up. It was enough to make him cry and quit the next day. Some follow up. Mr. Manager was in with HR the next day. Lost his manager position for a few months. When he got his manager position back, he was pretty chill from now on. Some of us younger guys don't like it as much because his outbursts were quite funny. I remember one time I was getting an earful and I could hear some of my friends trying to contain their laughter in the next aisle. As for the forklift guy, he did come back and is now working mornings instead of evenings. 
In high school, I worked at a grocery store, and this kid was all pissed off at another bagger and swearing in front of the customers. He said he was hoping he'd get fired. I told him he should quit before he gets fired so that it would look better on his resume in the future. A few minutes later, I realized he was missing. Then suddenly, he comes around the corner from the manager's office, no longer in uniform. He threw his uniform in the trash in front of the manager. Then he looked at me and said loudly, I took your advice. Then proceeded to walk across the front end, point to each associate saying, fuck you, to each of them, and walked out. Everyone was staring at me after, and I said, I did not tell him to do that. I worked in IT, and one guy who was one of the most chilled guys I knew was responsible for the deployment, updates, and maintenance of a specific product that generated high revenue. One afternoon, I was sitting at my desk and just heard a big crash and saw one of his three monitors on the floor. He stood up, shoved the next monitor over the divider onto the next section's desk, then swiped the third monitor off the other side, picked up his keyboard, and smashed it as hard as he could, kicked his chair away, and slowly, calmly, walked out the department without saying a word. He came back to work the next day as if nothing happened. Everyone knew the pressure he was under and was very good at his job, so nobody said a thing. When I was an intern, we had a high-priority project come through that my mentor was working on. Really fast turnaround with many late nights, shitty coffee, and good beer. Anyway, it was towards the end of the project, and I was finishing bring up on the board at my bench when I heard him muttering quietly to himself. I looked up to see if he needed me and watched him absolutely pound a computer monitor with his fist, then grab it, smash it down on the floor before stomping on it, screaming, There's no goddamn DRC error, you fucking slut! He calmed down after a bit, got a beer, then requested a new monitor. That's when I learned that no matter how mad you are, screaming at Ultium will not make your sleep deprivation better. We had this girl at work, and she liked to wear pants that showed a significant portion of her ass. Like, if her ass crack was the Gulf Coast of the USA with Key West being her asshole, we were probably at Tallahassee. Someone complained to her manager. He didn't believe us, so we had him sit in a meeting behind her and was completely horrified. So he had a conversation with her about proper workplace clothing. Well, she never got the message, and she got a phone call from HR giving a formal warning. She flips out, storms into a meeting, calls her boss a fucking pervert, then proceeds to yell, If you want to see my ass, then see this, and moons the room and storms off in a blaze of glory. This happened only a couple of days ago at my work. I didn't see it, but everyone's been talking about it. Apparently, girl A came up behind girl B and slapped her on the hard hat and said, learn how to do your fucking job. And girl B just fucking lost her shit and went full UFC on girl A. Chokehold, face punches, regular choking. Girl A tried defending herself with various building parts as weapons. Both are now fired. But I don't really blame Girl B. Girl A is a fucking annoying bitch and has been pushing everyone's nerves since she started. And I wouldn't want someone like that walking around treating co-workers that way. Someone was bound to take her down a peg eventually.